Good afternoon, Dr. Juan Castaneda, and thank you for agreeing to talk to the Gold Money Foundation. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to be here. There's been so much talk in the, the news recently about the Eurozone and the problems with the monetary union and excessive debt in the Eurozone. What kinds of short-term solutions do you think that the European Union will arrive at for plugging the holes in the Eurozone system? Okay, in the short term, uh, politicians uh, of all over Europe, uh, all over the, the Eurozone I mean, must support the currency, the Euro. And what I mean by supporting the currency uh, is that they should put it clear that they are going to rescue uh, the currency in case it is needed. Because we have a very strange uh, implementation of a monetary union in Europe. Because we have different countries with different treasuries, uh, different monetary po uh, po uh, fiscal policies, I, I'm afraid, and a single central bank. So this is a quite a difficult architecture to put uh, uh, in functioning. And this is just regarding the short run, but in the medium to long term, they have, they have to do what they didn't do in the past 10 years, which is to try to make the Eurozone an optimal currency area, which is not at all in the mo at the moment. So what I mean by this is that they should make it a more flexible, flexible area in order you know, to provoke, to make uh, workers to move from one place to another place, to make prices more flexible, to make uh, salaries and wages more flexible. That, that is exactly what I mean. In the long run, do you think the Eurozone is sustainable in its current form? I think it is not sustainable in its current form. Uh, because as I said before, uh, the Eurozone is not an optimal currency area. So in order to make it sustainable, a strict and severe uh, structural reforms must be set in, in the agenda. Uh, so in case uh, the ECB is given a clear mandate to preserve the potential power of the money, and in case the national treasuries are restricted to issue more, uh, not to issue, to issue more public bonds or to ex spend much more than they need to do, well, in that case, I would say that the monetary zone is sustainable. Do you think that uh, euro bonds need to be a part of some kind of solution to Europe's problems at the moment? Do, in other words, does the eurozone need to collectivize its debts and stop, for example, banks were using Greek and Italian sovereign debt as collateral at the ECB uh, for short-term loans, but if you created a euro bond, Presumably, they wouldn't be allowed to use Greek and Italian bonds and such like for such in such deals. Well, that's a difficult question. Yes, indeed, because if you are issuing euro bonds, uh, you have to put clear again. Uh, you have to make a, a, a segment of uh, responsibilities between the ones that are signing the the bonds. You know, so are the Germans taxpayers going to support the de the excessive debt of say Italy? Belgium or Spain? That's a very important question to put in, in the agenda as well. So, uh, so far the ECB is accepting the Greek bonds as collateral for uh, lending to the Greek banks, uh, banks. This is a short-term solution in order not to, you know, not to make the Greek banks collapse. But if they are going to move forward and to make, to create a market of euro bonds, they should make it clear first how they are going to divide the responsibilities of the payment of the extra extra borrowing of some countries. Do you think that uh, Spain will stay in the euro? And was it right for Spain and other southern European countries to have joined in the first place? Do you think it's been on balance, even though they are facing difficulties at the moment? Do you think that the euro forces them to face these difficulties in a way that, you know, for example, the United Kingdom, armed with the printing press, isn't forced to do so? Well, I must say that it has been a blessing for the Spanish economy. Yeah, even though I'm pretty much critic with the, the way the Eurozone was launched uh, 11 years ago, uh, if we compare the uh, development of monetary policy in the last 11 years by the European Central Bank, with the historical record of the Spanish authorities in the 19th and 20th centuries, okay, I must say that I, I would like to, to, to be a member of the Eurozone for longer. Uh, but even though I say this, and I, I do maintain this point, I must say that Spain should make 
a, a strong um, efforts to to resume its competitiveness in, in, in the currency area in order to avoid a massive external uh, debt and external deficit a again. Sure. What do you think will be the greater threat to economies in the coming years around the world, inflation or deflation? I mean, uh, uh, for the world economy? For developed economies all for over the world. For developed yeah. economies? Well, it is not going to be a problem of uh, deflation coming from increasing productivity, <laughs> that's I'm sure about that. If it is, it's going to be a, a, um, a problem of inflation coming from the excessive money supply coming from the Federal Reserve. Because you know that the uh, Federal Reserve is still the anchor, the monetary anchor of the, of the international monetary system. And once the Federal Reserve is increasing by the QE measures, it's increasing money supply, uh, uh, strongly, I must say, uh, the only fear that I, s that I see in the medium to long term is uh, inflationary pressures if they keep uh, pushing this way. Do you think that, uh, for want of a better word, monetary elites would be willing to consider gold as in some form of institutional role in the years ahead? Perhaps not a gold standard, but perhaps sort of a Bretton Woods type system or some just some way of stopping this sort of rampant effort of devaluation on behalf of all countries all over the world. Do you think that's a likelihood or...? Uh, to be honest, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see governments um, uh, restricting themselves uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to issue, to print money, uh, just uh, pegging the, the currencies to a fixed exchange rate or even worse, even worse in, the ter in their terms, I mean, uh, pegging the, tying their, their arms to the gold standard. What I do see is that maybe in the future we may see a more competition in money markets. This may be a smaller step, but a safer spe step to, to in, in the pursuit of, uh, of uh, what I would call some money, multi competition. Do you think that uh, SDRs issued by the IMF, do you think that's going to be an increasingly prevalent? feature of the world's monetary system in the years ahead? Well, in, in, in regarding Europe, they are going to have a, a prominent role, I'm afraid. <laughs> so yes, in some developed economies, uh, the IMF uh, rescue packages um, in combination with the packages of the whole Europe and the ECB is going to be a, a major role in solving the current crisis. We thought some years ago that, that the IMF uh, programs uh, were reserved for the underdeveloped economies and even for the emerging economies and not for the developed economies and we were wrong. What do you think ordinary people should look to do to try to protect themselves from the economic issues that are likely to confront in the years ahead? Well, even though they may be aware of this, of the current, th the current threats of, the, of uh, this um, scenario, this trouble scenario, they have little choices to escape from that. Uh, I'm afraid, <laughs> because we have the legal tender clause of the, of the money of the government. So the best thing they can do is to put their savings in better assets. When I mean better assets, I'm talking about the uh, currencies, like, like uh, the Swiss franc, for example, which has been a, a currency that uh, preserves the purchasing power of the, of the money. And why not uh, some precious metals, such, such as gold or silver, which has been uh, growing the last uh, 10 years, I would say. Final question, do you have any price targets for gold and silver or any ways of valuing them? I'm not a market analyst, so I don't have a prospect, a technical prospect for the prices of uh, gold and silver. But according to the uh, management of the um, state-owned or national currencies uh, in the last few years, I must say that the truly expansionary policies of especially the Fed in the last years is going to have a positive impact in the price of gold. That's what I, what I think. Dr. Juan Castaneda, senior lecturer at UNED University in Madrid and host of the website, theoldladyofthreadneedlestreet.wordpress.com. Thank you for talking to the Gold Money Foundation. Thank you very much.